Welcome to the Dispatch from the Delta. This is Federal Co-Chairman Chris Massengale, and thanks for listening to DRA's regional podcast with the leaders, businesses, and organizations that are doubling down on the Delta. We will hear about the challenges that we are facing, discuss the solutions that together with a lot of hard work, cooperation, and partnerships, we will continue to help create jobs, build communities, and improve the lives for Delta families and business owners. Thank you to everyone who sent us feedback after our launch a couple of weeks ago. Please subscribe to this feed. We have some exciting guests this week as we discuss the landscape of entrepreneurship and the resources and programs available to Delta entrepreneurs. My first guest is Julie Kirk, Director of the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the United States Economic Development Administration within the Department of Commerce. Julie, thank you for being uh, with us today, and you are such a great partner for the uh, DRA, and you taught me a lot, and, and you're one of these people I love spending time with because you're the real deal. You understand what it means, what's happening, and you're an entrepreneur yourself, and the things you're doing uh, with EDA I think is really awesome, and we appreciate the partnership that we have. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's, I'm honored to be here. Now, your official role is to drive policies that support uh, innovative economic development, such as innovation-based entrepreneurship. Give us a sense of what that means to the individuals who are not uh, in that system. Well, sure. So a lot of people, when they think about economic development, um, they think about either, uh, you know, kind of the infrastructure, utilities, transportation, or as uh, you know, sometimes we call them roads and commodes. Uh, or they think about, you know, economic development is about attracting big companies, you know, from one region to another. Uh, but, but what we do, um, the innovation, um, innovative economic development is really looking at non-traditional ways to create economic resiliency and growth uh, from within a community. So it's helping communities, teaching them how to fish, if you will, um, by using um, entrepreneurship as a tool for economic growth. Uh, there's a lot of statistics out there that show that, that job creation um, is, is led by entrepreneurial companies. Well, so let's stay with that just a second. You and I have had conversations about helping economic developers really think about this in, in some new ways. And so when, we're, when we talk about manufacturing, the traditional kind of economic development, uh, how would you recommend to economic developers to include more of this entrepreneurship or innovation-based entrepreneurship into their strategies? Well, I think they have to look at it as a continuum, right? So, you know, some community communities, if they don't have, you know, good, you know, solid power, good transportation, good bridges to, you know, empower commerce, you know, they're not going to be thinking about entrepreneurship because they've got to get the basics in line. But, but, you know, after that, then you've got to have a, so a strong technology infrastructure. So you've, you've got to have access to the Internet. You've got to have good cell phone coverage. Um, you know, and if you don't have any of those, then it's hard to do the other. But, um, but it's not an either or question. It's really a both and. Um, and and really, Great what point. the yeah, entrepreneurship is really tapping the resources of your people. You you know, Amer it's the old American ingenuity, right? It, you know, how can we tap the the possibility thinking and the ingenuity of our of our citizens of our community members, um, so that they can help them to create wealth and create companies and create jobs and make our community a better place to live. Well, I know that you've had some experience doing that, both as running programs and developing entrepreneurship ecosystem programs, and then as a former entrepreneur yourself. What did that experience teach you? How would you pass on some tips to others? Well, you know, I mean, in both cases, um, actually in anything that I've done, you know, going into it, you don't always know what you don't know. Uh, and that can be uh, that can be used to your advantage and that you can it gives you opportunities to be creative. Um, you know, so you use that as a way to, to figure things out and maybe a way that somebody else, you know, that that knows how to do something maybe you wouldn't have thought about. So it kind of gives you that out of the box thinking opportunity and almost imperative, really, because you don't even know what the box is. Um, and I think the, the second thing is that being an entrepreneur is really lonely. And um, having a community support uh, can mean the difference between, you know, even eating, you know, ramen noodles for the rest of your life and actually being able to take your family out to dinner. Well, 
tell us about uh, what's happening uh, with OIE right now. So before we transition to, to our next guest, I want to make sure that we have an opportunity for you to give us a sense of what's going on inside the, the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. So we uh, just a couple weeks ago, we announced the winners of our uh, first round of our Regional Innovation Strategies uh, uh, program, which is um, a couple of different uh, programs. One was a um, was giving money for our I6 program, which uh, is helping communities to create uh, proof of concept centers. So take an idea and prove that it's actually a viable uh, potential business. And then commercialization centers, which then takes that idea that they that somebody proved you know was uh, viable, and how do you turn that into a company? Um, so that was one set, and then there was also that was eight million dollars that we gave out, and then there was another two million dollars that we went into. Um, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we find entrepreneurs have is that really early stage funding, and so while our money can't go to the for profit entities, your your startups. We, we figured out we could help support uh, organizations that are trying to create or launch or market seed funds themselves. So our, our money is technical, technical support to support the folks that are trying to get the seed funds on the, uh, you know, into the hands of, of more entrepreneurs. So we just announced those. We've got a, a third uh, component of the Regional Innovation Strategies, the Science and Research Park Planning and Feasibility. Uh, that's another $5 million that we'll be announcing in the coming weeks. And we're already working on our next round of uh, regional innovation strategies. It's going to come out later this year. We were uh, fortunate to get appropriated another $10 million in our regional innovation strategies. And so we're looking at um, a couple of interesting ways to, to carve out uh, some money to help uh, some uh, rural communities and, um, and then also, you know, continue with uh, some of those base programs that we've been running for, for a few years now. Well, that's awesome. Julie, let people know how they can uh, get in contact uh, with your office. Uh, yeah, the best way is to, to go to EDA's website. It's um, eda.gov, and you can do the slash OIE, Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. We'll take you right to the OIE, but there's so many great things that the Economic Development Administration is doing. Uh, um, you know, I invite you to take a look at some of our programs uh, and then also sign up for our monthly newsletter so that when we do start putting out these new uh, grant programs that you get first notice so that you can uh, compete for some of the funds. That's awesome. Julie, thank you very much. You are a fantastic partner, and I tell you, when we look at the focus that we're putting at the Delta Regional Authority on helping to be a partner in this building of ecosystems around the region, with our, particularly with our recent launch of the Delta Entrepreneurship Network, uh, you have provided us a lot of good counsel, and we appreciate that a great deal. And you, will, you all will hear more from Julie Kirk as she and I continue to try to tackle this issue of helping to identify those pockets of entrepreneurship in the Delta region and make sure that they've got the access to resources and programming and partnerships to really elevate this ecosystem in the Delta region. Julie, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for all you do. Each week, we also share the story of a local leader or organization or on-the-ground efforts that is breaking through on the national stage. Our next guest that truly exemplifies that breakthrough, and I'm proud to welcome Trey Bowles, founder of the Dallas Entrepreneur Center and chair of the Startup of America for the Texas region, uh, to the podcast. I had a chance to meet Trey. In fact, Julie and I uh, participated together on a panel uh, just here recently here in Arkansas when we had a Startup America Summit, and they were so uh, kind to let me set in and take part in that conversation, and, and that was something that I took a lot of good stuff away from, and, and I appreciate that. So, Trey, welcome to the uh, the Delta podcast, and, and we appreciate uh, what, what you're doing. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, why don't we start by giving us a sense of what the Dallas Entrepreneur Center uh, is and kind of what you're doing and then the tie into our conversation uh, that uh, we were part of last week with the Startup America Summit here in Arkansas. Well, sure. I mean, the, the idea for uh, the Dallas Entrepreneur Center actually came from me being on the road and traveling around the country through my relationships with the Startup America Partnership. And, and as I was going into different communities and different ecosystems and looking at what they were doing to support and encourage entrepreneurship, I recognized that Dallas didn't have something like that. 
And so when we came back to Dallas, we you know, first went to all of our friends across the country and said, what do you do that works? What do you, what do, you do that doesn't work? And how can we learn from you? And then we launched uh, the Dallas Entrepreneur Center, or the DEC, as we call it, um, about 18 months ago. And the goal was to create a central hub that could provide entrepreneurs with key tools and resources that they need to be successful, things like training and education and mentorship and incubation and access to capital and promotional resources, all, all the things that come, come with that. We usually separate those things into three different categories, education, mentorship, and community. So, Trey, how would you recommend to us uh, given uh, your 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 footprint and the experiences that you've had and the successes that you guys have have really seen uh, with your leadership, how could we take some of those pieces and and apply it to the Delta region in our ecosystem building efforts? Well, I think first, you know, as I tell people all the time, in order to build a collaborative ecosystem, you really need just two people, right? Two groups that start to collaborate, and then you have an ecosystem. And from there, you begin to grow, expand it, and begin to involve what we call other stakeholders. Um, and, and what we're seeing and we're learning across the country, but specifically in Dallas, is, is a, a, a true thriving collaborative uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. Is it just about entrepreneurs and investors? They're involved in that process. They are stakeholders. But in addition to that, you have things like corporations and municipalities and media outlets, universities, and a whole slew of different people that sort of make up what an ecosystem is. You then go out and you find those different stakeholders and help them create the appropriate role they should play in this type of ecosystem, right? So it's the concept of um, everybody operating at their optimal efficiency, right, in the strengths and talents and um, excellence is that those di those different organizations have because if you're operating in that capacity then the entire uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem is firing off of each other and supporting each other. So I'm a local uh, community leader. I'm a local business leader. I'm, a, I'm a, lo a local elected official. I've been seeing what's going on with this entrepreneurship. I'm, I'm looking at, at my, my local community. But what would you say to be – the one or two things that if, if I'm trying to start and I'm looking around me and I'm like, okay, I need this in order to, to really connect the, the dots or to begin to put these pieces together, to even recognize I have an, an ecosystem for entrepreneurship, what, what would you say would be the first one, two, three steps if I'm that local community leader? What am I looking for? Well, I think you're looking for other like-minded people. You're looking for other entrepreneurs. You're looking for people that are doing things in a similar industry. You're looking for people who are doing things in a different industry and people who recognize the value of what we're starting to see. You know, you're starting to see this shared workspace model, sort of co-working um, space come together, and people are doing this all over the country. And what you really begin to see through that is these organic collisions that happen just by being in the vicinity with other creative, like-minded people, even if they don't do the same types of businesses that you do. And from that, you know, that begins to spur those three things that we really focus on at the deck as it, as it relates to education, mentorship, and community, recognizing that some of this really is just about knowledge. It's about learning some of those basic things like what is a balance sheet, why do you need one, or how do you write a marketing plan with no money. But that mentorship piece becomes really important. That, that group of stakeholders, subject matter experts, experienced entrepreneurs becomes really important because the one thing an entrepreneur needs is the one thing they don't have, and that's experience. You can't buy experience over the counter. You can't get it any other way than from learning over time and listening to people who have been there before. And the final piece, that community piece, is where things start coming together. You start connecting people for uh, employment opportunities and co-founder opportunities and client opportunities. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to put you on the spot here a minute. I, you know, I see the world from a rural perspective, and one of the things that I've really appreciated to my work with uh, Julie and what she's doing at the Office of Innovation and Entrepreneurship is trying to take this this issue, put it into our traditional uh, focus on rural strategies and, and connecting entrepreneurship in in rural America, and you are in a major metropolitan area, 
and one of the things that that I really appreciated about uh, what you said when we were at the at the summit is that ability to connect all of these systems in play. And so, do you think, from from what you're seeing and and the things that we're putting together from an ecosystem standpoint, can can this also hold true for that rural America? A small town USA type of perspective by by focusing on this as a strategy. Absolutely, I mean I think 100. percent I think the great thing about entrepreneurs is that entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship knows no bias. It doesn't care uh, what gender you are. It doesn't care what your ethnic background is. It doesn't care what your geographic location is. Um, every person in the country, every person in the world has equal opportunity to come up with an idea, pursue that idea, and execute it. And so there are nuances. There are small differences between a New York City and a, even a Dallas or uh, you know, a, a Nashville and a Little Rock. But, but in the end, we're all trying to do the same things. And so we have the same mentality. We have the same passions. You know, the same visions and a lot of times the same ideas. So I don't think that because you're in a rural area versus a metropolitan area that things should be that much different. In fact, my experience has been that the smaller cities actually get more stuff done quicker because they don't have the same level of bureaucracy. They don't have the noise going on. They're able to make decisions, um, contribute, invest in an idea and an opportunity and move forward. And I think with people like Julie, um, you know, working in the White House, it's going to be it's going to be effective because that's the White House making a good decision, saying, "Gosh, if we're going to focus on innovation and entrepreneurship, let's hire somebody who's an innovator and an entrepreneur to come in and help lead <laughs> that's right. what we're doing." And I think that makes a lot of sense. She's doing a lot of things in there. I mean, the the, the kind of things that are coming out of her department, um, the kind of grants and funds and whatnot that are becoming available, are things that actually help build a community. And if you help build the community, the community builders can help then create the right fertile environment for those small businesses, start startups, and high growth entrepreneurs to be successful. And that's key. What would you think that uh, with all the stuff that you're seeing that, that you're doing, particularly uh, with your work with Startup America, what can we expect in the future? What's, what's next, you think, in this, in this whole arena? Well, the thing I, I really appreciate about Startup America is it, it began to bring together a network of community builders, right? men and women across the country that are doing this in different cities, different regions, different districts. Uh, and what that provides for the rest of us is learning opportunities. It's almost like that mentorship we, thing we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, the, the idea that you know I may be 18 months or two years into my community here, but you know, our friend Michael Burcham in Nashville is five or six years into it, right? And our friends in right. Chicago at 1871 are a little further into it. So what, what we started to see is that these communities have enough similarities that you can tell how long a person's been a community builder based on, where, on the questions that they ask and the help that they need. And so what I think Startup America will continue to do and continue to be is a key network um, opportunity for these community builders to be able to be resourced, to be able to be connected, and really to, to, to providing best trends and practices for them to be able to go in their communities and make their communities as efficient, effective, and collaborative as possible. Well, well Trey, I think you, you definitely uh, hit the nail on the head, and I want to thank you for sharing uh, your time with us and, and again, allowing me to be a part of uh, the conversations uh, recently. I appreciate the leadership that you're showing and the work you're doing with Startup America. And, folks, you can learn more about the Dallas Entrepreneur Center at the DEC, T H E D E C dot uh, C O. And please go there and check that out. Uh, I want to thank uh, Julie and Trey again for joining us. Uh, we will continue to discuss and make more investments in entrepreneurship and the infrastructure that supports entrepreneurs because we believe it has a huge impact on the Delta economy and important to our overall strategy. To learn more about other investments we're making into our region and its future, please visit dra.gov or connect with us on our social media platform. Thank you again for listening to Dispatch from the Delta and have a great week.